The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi everyone, 1st of May and we're looking at on this Monday, the first day of the uh, first day of the week, first day of the month. <coughs> what are we looking at? What we're looking at are a number of things. I'll go through it very slowly since it's the start of the week. Let's take a little time here. <coughs> we need to see where the Dow closes. Have we just made the intraday high and now we're going to be pulling back as this leg E in the daily uh, at 34,134 right now, up 37. The leg G slash C in the S&P. There is uh, G says, oh, you got to be careful. A says, are you kidding? Careful, I want to buy every single dip. So when you have this conflict, you have to look at the technicals. <clears throat> and the technicals are weak. I'll go through in a little while. Uh, but look at the 9 EMA, how it's spectacular. You had that rally from Thursday and Friday because it did not close negative, And I've been talking about that all week. Uh, all last week and even the week before. <clears throat> and look at the QQQ. And, uh, this is the index 100 trading vehicle down 75 at 321.76. Fascinating. Why? Because it's in a rectangle formation. It dipped underneath the support level, went over the support level. Will it come back? I think it will come back. <clears throat> and I'm not sure whether I'm going to call this an E right now. Look at these double tops. 321.63, very beginning of April. Middle April, it goes to 321.42. I mean, really, 13 cents away from uh, 11, 12 cents away from making a new recovery high. And then on Thursday and Friday, it went to higher highs. And now it's just bumping into resistance. The resistance is <clears throat> saying that in this particular phase of the market, we've seen the fund buying and the very bearishness going into midweek last week resolve to the upside. Now it's somewhat overbought, uh, only on, on a, an emotional level. Some of the charts are only just now breaking out. Some of the charts didn't do anything. Some of the charts had a great move. And in fact, they started to pull back. Oh, this is a perfect time. Wednesday, we're going to discuss the different phases, what we're looking at in the different sectors, uh, what seems to be working, what has just taken on a new life just momentarily. Uh, after all, is a Microsoft an unbelievable company that morphed, re reinvented itself at least a few times, but the last time from the 2000 high going into <clears throat> the whole period of 2006 and seven, and now it's come out as one of the leaders uh, in uh, cloud operational systems. Uh, they have a subscription service, plus all, all these other uh, interesting facets that are starting to kick in as being very important. Even, even more selective is the fact that it broke out, it gapped up and had three Strong candles after the gap up, which was the gap up Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday. Yeah, on Wednesday, broke out to a recovery high on Thursday above the, the gap high. And now look at this. Let me just get out of that. Okay, got it. Uh, okay. Now what we're looking at is in the weekly chart, that is a significant breakout. In the monthly chart, that beautiful cup formation has, we did not see it in uh, April. It just barely made it. On Monday, oh, I'm sorry, on Friday, and this turnaround in the MACD. See the histogram, these vertical lines. I'll be talking about this when we uh, do our, the webinar on Wednesday. That is really important. That's the first time since Microsoft broke down back in, uh, that was, it made a 349 high back in November of 2021. And then all of a sudden, you come to uh, a year ago, March, a year ago, over a year ago. And that nine period crossed negative, and it hasn't been able to garner strength since, although it has gone <clears throat> from 349 to the uh, to the two, I think it was 218. Let me just get that exact right. 213.43 was, let me put that in, 213.43, I believe that was October 2022. Yeah, so this is a really good, we are seeing a transition in the in the tidal movements from daily to weekly, finally to the monthly 
charts starting to kick in. And let me show you what I talk about. And I'll really go through this uh, in great detail on Wednesday when I do my webinar, because I want this for subscribers. I want them to understand why we have the positions we have, what the what the sector rotation has done, what is starting to work. And look at this. I'm going to go to the S&P. Right, let's just do it in order. I'll go back to the Dow. Monthly charts because we've started a new month. This is a brand new month. Make a new recovery high <clears throat> um, in this in this bar, and that's higher than the previous month. That's really good. But if you make a higher high above the previous peaks, that's even better. So what we're looking at is the high of 40. Let me just give you the exact number. The high of in the S and P. The high that was made at leg B, which went to a peak B last month. And that is at 4195.44. One penny above that sauce leg C. Uh, I mean, really? Uh, that's, where are we? We're at 4172 right now. I said 4195.45. 20 points. Do you think we couldn't make 20 points in the whole of May? I think we could. And that'll start leg D in the weekly chart. Well, actually, it doesn't take too much to get to a leg D. Uh, and then uh, that that becomes a leg C in the monthly chart. I, I want to talk about other things as well, but I did want to show you how these Chapman Wave inside track repellent and then support levels how they kick in. Because if you can if you can understand I N D U, just the simplicity of it, and how look at this, we are now out of this wreck this very narrow declining rectangle or channel and we've moved up away from it in the monthly chart the MACD in the in the in the on the Dow monthly chart has not crossed positive but the histogram is improving 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 but there's a long way to go it'll take the Dow 34,005 or 600 to really get that MACD the green line nine period differential to cross positive yes something even more important the stochastic is rising. The on-balance volume is really strong. It might even be a tad overbought, but it's rising in the monthly chart. And the weekly charts, um, finally, you've got to 84% in the stochastic. And the MACD has crossed positive. The on-balance volume is saying something's not quite right with the volume. Yeah, and I think that's because within the Dow, you've had a number of stocks that have really got clobbered uh, at different points. And that really, because it's a look-back period, it really starts to impact uh, the price of the uh, of the on balance volume, so I'd like for that on balance volume instead of being where it is right now to be quite a bit higher. If I had to give you a percentage, it's not exactly related; it just corresponds. But it's not. I'm not doing this. I haven't put in here where it says a right side. Let me just show you what I need to do. Scale, and that then I should put. I got no axis. So if I put an axis, the whole thing would be distorted. So I have no axis. I don't have right side. So I'm just saying if we can get up into that 28%, 32% area over there, <clears throat> that would say now we start to kick in with really strong, uh, with a really strong move to the upside. Okay. So there are a couple of things I want to look at. I showed you the silver. Silver's doing really well. I was looking at PAAS. We do not have this. Uh, this is uh, Pan American silver. And all the different techniques, I'll be discussing these techniques uh, in this stock and other stocks on Wednesday. I think you can just use very simple techniques, but it's all right at the turn to period moving average of 18.08, and right now it's at 1786. I'll be if you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities. Subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're looking at, I'm just checking uh, messages here. Yeah, yeah, we've got a couple of things. I'll do it right now. So um, within the context of what we were looking at last week before I was away on Friday was high-grade carpet. And I said, whoo, not good. It's within the upper range of the big rectangle going to the middle range. And will that hold? Because the weekly chart is, has the 9 EMA is so close to turning negative. But the price is old. Price is the arbiter of a trend. So far, it's holding OK. Right now, it's up um, 0.05 at 3.94 in, in the continuous contract. We were looking at FCX the other day. And I said, I... I I can see how important the 200 period moving average is here because it's really been, it's gone below than above, but it keeps coming back to it. And look what happened today. Try to pop above it and it went right back under it. Uh, that's Freeport McMorrow. And that's why I said, I just don't know if right, I'd like, rather wait about uh, three, four days before I can do F F FCX again. So we're doing it. This is, the, this is the time to do it. It just doesn't have sustaining strength. And the weekly chart says it's more likely in a, uh, Right here, a dreaded H pattern with a test of the upper band of the falling axis. Oh, these are all patterns I'll talk about on, on Wednesday, but I'll talk about it right now just to show you. See this pattern here? There are three patterns. So the first one, I'll just, let me just get the chart. The first one is I've drawn in. Uh, if we can, I can find it right there. The price goes to higher highs and higher lows. Then it drops sharply. Usually it's a D, E, or F, and then it comes down. And then what you do is you monitor if it starts to make lower highs and much lower lows, it makes a trend line resistance level, a declining trend line. It's an expanding cone. And the lower low, it keeps going to lower lows. And it means that this is a much sharper angle for the base. Then all of a sudden, it turns around. It's, it finds support, turns around. If it takes out that upper declining trend line, there's a chance that it could go to each one of the successive highs on the left side, peaks that failed, until it gets to the, high, the left side flagpole high. Well, that's called the falling axe formation. It leads to a Chapman Wave one-to-one -one parallel extension cup pattern if it breaks out sharply. We've got a couple of those. But in the meantime, let me show you what I am talking about here. Look at that resistance. Then within this, I, I teach about just 
everyone has trend lines in the, on the platform that you have. Not everybody has the arch formation, which is a great shame, but you can make it up. You can go straight line up or straight like a V-shape. You don't have to have the arch. I just, I've got it there, I use it. But what we're looking at right here, this in the weekly chart of freeport McMurrin is a Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. So that becomes red at the bottom. Once you get into it, it says, great, because if you can take out the green resistance that's been there, um, that's going to be a big positive. And then you can start looking at, oops, not yellow, but green. And then you can start, you don't have to, I put the colors in so everybody can see it. I don't need this, the colors and stuff. I can see it in a second. So this huge rectangle formation has continued. Within that, you've got this pattern where you keep making low lows and lower highs, much lower lows, <clears throat> but it's starting to find some support. However, look how the MACD in the weekly chart deflected lower. Look at the stochastic deflecting lower. Look at the on-balance volume, absolutely very weak. And that, and now you've got from last week an S, meaning that the 9 period moving average went under the 14. <clears throat> That's a hint to say just be careful. Even more important, you've got the pattern that I call the dreaded H. What's the dreaded H? It means that the price comes straight down. <clears throat> tries to rally, fails to the peak A or B, it can only go to one or two peaks higher, and then it takes out the left side low when it arches over, it looks like an H, it's red, because if it takes out that left side low, it can go a lot, lot lower. Look, this is the invert, this is like a V, but it's like an arch, took it out, went a lot lower. Now what we're looking at is, and on the upside, you saw this here, it's the reverse. The dreaded H on the upside is really the reverse green Y, take out that left side high and you can go much higher. Left, there's your cup formation, there's your cup formation. There's your failure at a doji candle peak D and it pulls back. MACD's turned down stochastic. This is the weekly chart. On balance volume makes an M-shaped pattern. Boom, comes down. So that's the reason why I'm saying I'd be very careful about Freeport McMahon. So there was a question about that. So the question came in also about PCT. P why am I typing in the wrong place each time? Right there, PCT. <clears throat> and that's that company, Pure Cycle Tech Inc., Recycles contaminants and pure polypropylene. We were looking at this the other day. I said, hey, it sounds good. How? What's it doing? Well, there's the falling axe in the Chapman Wave arch formation right there. And it held. So now it's tackling the inside track repellent zone from the falling axe. What does it mean? You see this 200 period moving average, which was the resistance, then the support, then the resistance, then the support, and then failed. Bam. It goes all the way from the eights down to the fours. Well, now it's rallied. The MACD is crossing positive. The stochastics rallying, the on-balance volume is strong. Might be a tad overbought, but it's strong. The nine period moving today has just crossed. The day is young. You have to wait for the close, but it's just crossed positive. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, ha, huh, that 200 period moving average means nothing until you get closer and closer. But if PCT, trading at 667, down, uh, uh, unchanged right now, can get to $7.16, boom, the 7.38 level of the 200 period moving average becomes a magnet and it should stick, stay around there for a little while as it tries to see, can it break above? Can it, is it a magnet? Does it become a propellant, a repellent? It has the same aspect as the inside track, but it's just one line. So here we are looking at it and the weekly chart you can see is starting to improve. So I said, I, I like this, but it need, I want to see if it can break and hold above this inside track repellent zone. So if this is able to get to, um, it's pulled back from the high of 674 already, I think it's going to kind of stall over here. Remember, this is your starting point, and you have your jo object and job in the Chapman Wave methodology is to count each peak, successively higher peak, and every trough. But each peak, once you've made your low, you got a, that's peak A. That's a peak A right there, gray A, because it's under that one. But then it went to a B. Now it's come down, and it had another pop-up to an A and failed, another A and failed, but all of these above there. So these are not necessarily failure patterns. This means you've just restarted your count. Now it's going to B, and now finally it's going to C. C is below that peak B. That's not the point. The point is you've got to count each successively high peak from that low right there. So this is saying good action, not great action. We'll have, the price has to determine the next phase of this particular stock. It is trying to improve, but until it can go sharply above that peak B, I don't know what the lettering will be at that point, and get closer to the 200 period moving average, this is still in a kind of a trading range. Next question was DKNG. I said to subscribers, been on the list for a little while. 
It finally got to that D. I drew this in. We don't have it. I should have bought it just on that dip over there. Um, I actually, we've, we had it once a long time ago, right in the beginning, but then I said, let's just see how this plays out. To be quite honest, I'm not a fan of, of uh, gambling on professional sports. It, at some point, there's going to be huge abuse. That'll come later on. But uh, why I I initiate that um, that potential? Anyway, that's for my business. My business is to look at the chart. And the chart says, I mean, I remember what happened when, when amateurs could only go to the Olympic Games. And then you had people from the communist countries who spent all day practicing and training and doing everything. But they were called amateurs because they didn't get paid. They got everything else paid for, but not. It wasn't official. So these things are subject to, to change. And now we have professional athletes, and it hasn't impacted the uh, Olympic Games negatively. I think at all factors, it's, it's even better. The, the, the levels are unbelievably good. So now we're looking at Duncan. Up 29, says 22.20. I'll be back. We're looking at this cup formation, travel weight, inside wedge, etc. Dow's up 68. Kind of struggling a little bit here. As if he's up 250. I wouldn't be surprised if we're making a very short Steve trip. Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago. And the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Dan at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we're back. And now let me just go to the question that I had here. So I just want to finish this up here because I don't think I quite finished what I was looking at. And that is, <clears throat> oh, someone just said, uh, A2 said, uh, PCT received certificate certification on the mechanical mechanical completion today. Okay, PCT. Let me just see this. PCT, 
and it is uh, it's up penny at six uh, fifty eight. Yeah, but the whole thing, the price looks to me like it's a process, and I like it when the process is integral to what the the company says that they do, and it says there's since the low that was made in March, <clears throat> the company has been on a determined effort here to fulfill whatever their product lineup is. And you can see that it's attempting to, to make that four, the 440s low that was made some kind of a support level so that it can move higher. So this is all part of that process. My suspicion is that if we're looking at it in what's today, May the 1st, um, I would say by the 23rd of May to the first week of June, if this stock is finally trading above nine, uh, when I say trading, I mean it's it's hit nine and it's pulled back, but now it's actually using nine as a magnet level, hopefully a support level. That's a completely different ball game. Then that monthly chart with the H pattern can finally start to do a ball formation to start to move high. If it can get to ten by June without taking out four, it can test the low. Let's say four twenty. <clears throat> That would be really good action. These things move very quickly. That's why the numbers are it's a, a, a double. And this is why I'm saying this is what. But in the meantime, I think it's just kind of stuck on the short term. I think it needs to hold the 620 level, uh, definitely the 590s. If it goes under 590, it's stuck here for in a rectangle formation for a much longer time. So the question came up. So uh, uh, Dun uh, Dun uh, I always think Duncan, but it's not. It's DNGN. This is uh, DraftKings. Yeah, I think it's in play. And it did the left side, uh, right side price time match right here. I'll talk about that in my, I'll, I'll demonstrate some live in my uh, webinar coming up. There's a lot going on. This is such an important period right now because all of a sudden you've got a lot of people saying, oh, yeah, it's all over. We're not going much much further down. And another crowd saying, oh, no, this is the start of a, of a huge move to the upside. I'm in the camp that says choppy, 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 higher highs and higher lows. Uh, that's the kind of way I'm looking at it. I don't want to get carried away and say, oh, yeah, Dow went to uh, 34,000. Therefore, the next step is 36,792. I mean, I, I, I might think that that's got nothing to do with articulating it and giving a verification of why it should do that. I will have a better sense in about a few days' time if there's a – if there's because the Dow – let me just do this. I'll, I'll move away from uh, DraftKings for a moment just to show you. If there is a move in the monthly chart <clears throat> into the 34,500s any time in May, that's only three points, uh, 300 points higher, 200 and something points higher. But if there's a move and on a weekly base it closes in the 34,600 area, that just has to touch it once, I'm looking at something very different. I'm looking at a cup formation having formed from basically a rectangle and that says that the MACD continues higher and the 34,712 high that was made back in December becomes a target. And that's where the next really serious uh, resistance comes in. So I just want to, as I'm doing this, I'm trying to show you the techniques we'll be talking about. So let's go back to DKNG, Draft Kings. And this is what I'm looking at. The weekly chart, you can see, did this. Now, would I take the low that was made right here as my, if I was over there? Would I take that low and say, okay, left side, right side, price, time match. Would that move to lower lows? I'd say, no, I can't do that. I have to move it out a little bit. I have to find a candle that looks to me like it could be the low that I can use as the plumb line. And that's what I'm going to be teaching. So in this case, the lows over there, that looks like too, too, too far a distance. So I use this peak right here. And I say, okay, I'm going to draw in a left side, right side, price, time match. And that's bar symmetry, and I make that green, and I just move it to the right. And I move it to the right over here, and I draw in from this level over here, I draw in channel wave inside wedge target resistance line. That's what I do. I'm just I'm going to stop it here because I need to show you what I'm going to do. And then I try to join it to the right side of this trend line. So I'll go all the way there. Well, it turns out from the move that it started to have over here, having made a lower low, that it's moving really quickly. This big bar, the week of the uh, 17th of February, 
lower in the 15s, high in the 21s. I mean, that's a, that's almost a 50% move. <coughs> um, says, you know what, we can get there in a much quicker time frame, which it did. <coughs> so the very next week, it went to the higher la high, went to a peak D, then it pulled back. But look how it held the nine-period moving average. It walked the nine-period moving average. So I like this. If I'm setting aside my my distaste and my dislike for the fact that folks can bet on teams because I think it has a, a psychological adverse. You remember I talk about when you have a bad trade and now you've got this trade, even if it's a small position, but it's down 30%. Your other stocks are doing great. On average, that's going to drag you down. So I don't like that. I like to get out of it because what happens is the little elf sits there on your shoulder, wagging his finger and say, I'm sitting here, I'm bugging you. I'm going to bug you and bug you. You're going to think, you can't think straight because all these other stocks that you look at that have much better chart patterns, you're trying to make up a loss. And that's really important. So I think that, that so I'm getting that aside. Looking at the chart, <clears throat> I like DraftKings. I think it's yet to stay. I think until it gets the, the abuse comes in, I mean, there's another one, bets. So we were looking at it. I mentioned in my market over the folks. If you if you join my, if you're a subscriber, <clears throat> on the weekends, um, I do about an hour overview, and I go through these technical aspects. I go through the different charts, why we're looking at what what stocks we have. For instance, we had a stock that had a a 30% gain. Uh, we've been taking little bits off, but we never got our second position. <clears throat> Today I said we're going to go back in. It's had a nice peak D pullback. We're going to go in. Here's the number. We got the number exact to the penny, and it ran it. I thought, oh no, I hate that. Getting it to the penny, nobody's that good. And I'm sure it's going to come down. What it came down, it took out that entry point. But we had a we had a stop. A reason, not a big stop, but we had a stop in, in place. It only went down a little bit lower, and now it's acting really well. But you can only do the analysis. The stock has to do the job. I mean, you do your best it can. So all I can say is that this particular area of betting, round hill sports betting, these guys are doing very well. And I suspect there's a residual that they now have as a base level on bad months or whatever. Maybe the summertime is quiet. I don't know. In sports, maybe they start to fade a little bit. I think they're going to have a very good year. That's just my thinking. Um, it's got nothing to do with it or not. We, I would like to get into one of these. I said that I said to subscribers today, it's on our list to buy. Maybe I have to get in at a higher price, maybe wait for the big drop. Who knows? But whatever it is, they are acting well. And the daily, the weekly, and the monthly charts are terrible, but they are starting to improve. So I'll be back in a moment. Uh, now it's up, it's, it's, it's up uh, six, and I'll be right back. Basil Chap, tight to pick issues out. Gold report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. 
Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. All right, so in this segment, I want you to do A, B, and B, A, A B, and B. Uh, a, B, and B is the symbol. It's up 251 and 122. I did some work over the weekend <coughs> looking at this and Uber. Actually, uh, we got our first Uber. We booked the first Uber, uh, my wife and I, over the weekend. We've been in Uber and Lyft many, many times, uh, mostly because when we were with my son and daughter, they, they were moving around. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, <clears throat> but... Most importantly, is it was an experience for me. So on uh, Friday to the airport, um, Ubered, to, wanted to see if it got your on time, got your ride on time, it was very nice. Um, and it was, actually it turned out to be about the same price as a taxi. And it, it wasn't earlier, but evidently this was a, a peak time, I'm not sure why. Um, and then what happened is in a landing at the airport, got another one, and that one was pretty reasonable because the price. I, I was watching it in the plane, and it was going from uh, thirty-two dollars to forty-eight dollars, and then from to to uh, thirty-seven dollars, etc. I, I was watching it. Finally, when I landed, it was good. But coming back, <clears throat> the left at four thirty in the morning because I wanted to do four twenty-five. Actually, wanted to get to the airport because the flight was at six. And I hit the uh, uh, the button uh, that was in the evening. It was Saturday night, and I I I looked at this and I said, "Ah, oh, that's great. That's a good price." And then I looked at it again, and it, it doubled. And then what happened is, I got uh, I, I whatever it was. It was not that not that cheap actually. And I got I got the Uber because I've been practicing on it. But when I landed in, uh, that was going to the airport. Yeah, then when I landed, just before I landed in Boston, I did the same thing. And there was one for 32 bucks. But I didn't realize that it would take, we had to wait, you know, you go to land and you got to go to get your luggage. Oh, we didn't have any luggage. I had to go to find the place to for the uh, for the Uber, uh, Uber uh, uh, pickup. And so in the interim period, I, I lost that ride. I, I actually tried. I, I texted the guy, say, "Oh, just landing." I so say he said, I, I, "All right, you'll have to get someone else." But then, when I got it from the thirty-two bucks, as we landed, eventually the price was eighty bucks. I mean, eighty bucks. So this uh, surge. I, I think people at some must. Be, I mean, I'm late to the game. I'm people have been doing this for for ever, but I'm not sure if people are going to do the people. I I would have just grabbed the, the taxi was right there, and if the fuss, I could have just ripped right into the taxi, and it would have been less. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying I did it more as an experiment. I could easily I actually could have parked my car and because it was only a couple of days, and I pick I right there at the airport and got hop right in. I said let's we got to experiment. So it was an expensive experiment, and I'm looking at this, and Uber is up nicely today. I think using the technology that's there, I think the ease of the technology, et cetera, 
I think this is this is a viable um, commodity for people. So I like it very much. I think they're going to be shaky periods. I'm not sure what the earnings should be. I, I don't see why the earnings people are really so traveling a lot to the last quarter should have been very good for them. I think going going to the next quarter, that's what I really want to see. But I think it's viable. So the question is Uber. And the answer is yes. I think it's a viable and a person who asked has a longer term uh, tr positions, not just trades, but positions. And I'm saying I think it's here. I think it's here to stay. Uh, if you compare it to Lyft, and I spoke to an Uber driver uh, while we were driving, and he had driven for Lyft uh, in Milwaukee, and he, here he was in uh, uh, Illinois. Um, so he said uh, Uber is superior in every way. Uh, he kind of liked Lyft for a while, but then he said he didn't like it because of certain things and he articulated them. And I think Uber is the place. Out of the two of them, you didn't ask me. I'm just saying from my chart formation, from what just I can gather, Uber is the place to be out of the two of them. But I would, I would position myself in Uber so that I had a, 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 a kind of a, a pool of money that I wanted to put in specifically to Uber and I would have a position, say you've got a position right now, 32.66. And it pulls back to 30, the, the 30.60, the 200 period moving average. Then it starts another move up because it's kind of in a rectangle formation. And then that becomes a cup formation in the monthly, weekly chart, which says it could go all the way back to the 37s. If that's the case, then I would start my position. And you either use time. You can either say every three months I'm going to put money into Uber for the next year, something like that. I don't care where it is. It's a time sequence as if I, it was an IRA fund or something that I'm putting money into uh, sequentially. Um, that's one way. Or you build up positions. And if you aren't in it, I think you are in it already, I would add the next position if it can hold about 33.80 to 34.10 for about three sessions. I'd say, yep, then you could add your next position. And that's the way I would not get the full position. I would only be adding on, on moves to the upside. Okay, I hope I did that. Uh, uh, MACD, uh, MACD is a question. So this is part of the defensive area, <laughs> made a round number, 295 high, all time high, about five sessions ago, what was it? That was on April the 20, uh, if I can get the mouse to move, there it is. April uh, 295, round number high, uh, I'm going to say that was on the 25th of April, pulls back for a day, has another day to test that high. I remember it taking uh, to 295 by a penny or two. Yep, 2905.05. I was impressed with that. 9P moving average hasn't even considered to turn down. It's still expanding. The MACD made an M-shaped formation. That's saying it's getting a little toppy. Uh, the stochastic is at 86%. That's fabulous. The on-balance volume is good in the daily. Weekly charts are all improving tremendously. This is in play. It's acting very well. I would not consider anything other than just because you asked me the question. If you are long, I would say, you know, for money management, if you've been in for a while, there's nothing wrong with taking a little bit off to say, hey, uh, it's in a potential leg F. There could be an alternate count because of the inside. Oh, there it is. There we go. Uh, instant, instant. Yeah. Right there. So there's a chance that it has a new buy signal to buy mode. It can go to a, a, a D even. But in this particular point, actually, I would not even take a little money off. I would rather say, look, you tell me you're acting so well. I'm going to have a trading stop on something that I would have taken it off a little bit. Instead, why not have at 297.77 up 2.02? You could have a so for two points, I wouldn't fuss. You're either going to take it out right now and you're going to say, hey, Hey, this is fantastic. Or you're going to say, I am going to fuss. I'm going to have a two-point trading stop and let it go up. But as it gets closer, if it can, touch 300. At 300, I would definitely take a little bit off no matter what. Hope that helps you. But all the technicals are good. Even the monthly is starting to improve. Um, it's held the nine-period moving average since it crossed positive back in August of 2020 in the 190s. And here it is at 290s. Very nice. Congratulations if you are holding it. If this is a brand new buy, um, that's something completely different. So maybe uh, we'll have time. Just pop in right now to say this is a brand new buy. But if it's not, you are in it. Um, 
Yeah, so the reporting on the 9th for Airbnb, you know, the 9th is, is a number of trading days away. It's a lifetime for a stock like Airbnb. So if you want your day, you could have a short term, uh, just a position you can put the buy in right now as a trade, but you better have a very tight stop. That was the TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added cost when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well well so it's always at your reach to sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders just visit the front page of tfnn.com you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market you're going to need a crystal ball after all it's impossible to predict the future right like any endeavor in life before you decide it's impossible get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, real quickly, Tiger YouTube, uh, ADP is it making a bottom. It's making a bottom. I don't know if this is the bottom. It's slumped down to the 236 uh, area. Oh, it's a two, yeah. And, and then it had a huge spike up. It's trading now at 221. So two, wait, what was that? Did I say it correctly? Let me just do this quickly. It's slumped down to the 201 area on the 26th. And now it is at 222, almost 10% higher. Yes, I think this is the start of a move. And what it says is it's turning the 215 to 212 area into very strong. It should turned into strong support, and it went L, the nine period, moved over the 14 period for the first time in quite a while. So this is, yes, this is a starter position. Don't get carried away. Uh, it's it's the monthly chart says that it's at a, a pretty serious pullback from the all-time high. Okay, so in the meantime, let's look at it again tomorrow. But at this point, I'm saying, yes, this is nice action. A quick question came in. Yeah, fuel, fuel cell, I'll do that tomorrow. Right now, it did have a pop-up, but this is the one that is, uh, it has a... Um, it's notorious for giving back what you think is great gains. At some point, it's going to really work. I've seen a lot of charts over the weekend that had this huge stuff and a fabulous pop-up one day last week, and now you want to see follow-through. There is some follow-through here. This is in play, fuel cell. 
but you have to have a very long-term uh, outlook here at two dollars and six cents. I think between two fifty-eight and even one sixty-three, there are going to be opportunities for fuel at some point in two thousand and twenty-three. This thing could be five bucks. That's the way I'm looking at it. Just because it's fuel cell energy, electric service, national, uh, it, it does gas and biogases. It's, there's always a story there. So with that said, I like what, we, and one of the reasons why from our October low, we have kept the Dow Diamonds and the three times long, and we've had trading positions on the upside and downside, is because I don't want to mess those entry points in October. I don't think we're going to get them again. So. We're doing that, and we're waiting for declines to add to the upside, to, to the positive side. We've done the short side. We're done with that for the moment. So I'm, I like what I see, and 